Hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to show an active NES controller overlay on your videos or streams in OBS. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So I will mention for today's video, I'm going to be doing all of this on PC. And for this method, you are going to need to be playing and streaming or recording on your PC for this to work. So the first thing you need to do is open up your web browser and come to this link. Links is always in the description down below. And this is going to be for the gamepad viewer websites. Now, when you first come here, you might get this big red strip at the bottom to say there's no controller currently connected. Now, in today's video, I'm not going to be showing you specifically how to connect an NES controller, as those methods can vary widely. Although if you would like me to do a follow up video to show you how to do that, let me know in the comments down below and I'll be sure to add it to one of my future videos. So for today's video, I am using an Xbox One controller, although it will just visualize as an NES controller. However, once you have your controller connected, all you need to do is click any button on your controller and then you'll notice we'll have these active extra settings here at the top. So what we need to do is come to the top here. We're going to be clicking on currently viewing. We're going to be selecting this drop down. We're going to be selecting whatever player your controller is currently connected to. So today's video, I only have one controller connected, so it's going to be player one for me. Now by default, once we come here, we will be shown an Xbox One controller. We don't need to worry about this. We're going to be changing this in a moment to do that what we need to do is come to the top here we're going to be clicking on the xbox symbol right here we're going to be clicking this drop down and we're going to be coming down to the very bottom here until we see nes and we simply need to select this and then we will get this nes controller right here now from this point you can really easily press any buttons on your controller you can see as i press the arrows they will show up my start and select will show here too and then my a and my b buttons will also show up here as well so just like that we've created an active overlay for our nes controller now as mentioned i am currently using an xbox one controller however if you are using an extra controller or you're using an official NES controller and you're having some issues, the next thing we can do is actually remap some of these buttons to change them to be exactly how we need. To do that, what we're going to be doing is coming up to the top left here. We're going to be clicking on the burger menu and then we're going to be coming to the left here and we're going to be getting some extra settings and options for our active controller overlay. The first thing we're going to be checking out here is the remap buttons. What we can do is select this and here we'll get some options to add new mappings for our buttons. So to remap buttons, the first thing you will need to do is select the controller you want to remap buttons for. For this, all you need to do is click this drop down and make sure you have player one or whichever player you're currently using connected. As you can see in today's video, I am using an Xbox 360 controller. However, the visualization will still be the same. So this isn't really that important here in this case. From this point, if you'd like to add a new mapping, simply click it here. You'll then have the option to choose between a button, an axis or a diagonal button. And here you can select and set a value for any of these things you want. So for example, if I press here and then I press the up button on my D-pad, that is now going to be the controller we're going to be mapping for. So what we can do is we can select it to up. You simply press and hold for three seconds and then it will be mapped. You can then do this for multiple different mappings and you can simply select and build all of the different things you want to add here. If you'd like to delete one, you can simply click minus on the left. And once you're happy with a controller mapping, you can simply click apply mapping. Or if you'd like to create a backup, what you can do is come here to the right and simply click export mapping to URL generator. Save that in case you ever move to a new PC. It'll be really helpful if you're going to be using something specifically like this. But as mentioned, I didn't have any issues with mine and it seemed to work fine just out of the box with my Xbox One controller. From this point, what we're going to be doing is generating a URL of this controller so we can bring that over into OBS and then have it set up in there. To do this again, what we need to do is come up to the top left, click on the burger menu here again. We're going to be coming to the left and this time we're going to be looking for the generate URL option right here. If we select this open, we'll be brought to this pop up and here we're going to need to make sure we have a couple of settings correct before we can copy the URL. The first one, again, we're going to need to make sure our player is selected correctly. In this case, player one is perfectly fine for me. Our skin here will sadly change back to the default of the Xbox One. We need to double check this, click this drop down and simply click the NES controller here at the bottom. And then we're going to have our NES controller selected. There is a couple of extra settings here at the bottom that I'm not going to be touching in today's video. But if you would like to experiment or play around with any of them, you can feel free to do that. Some of them are nice to have, although with an NES controller, a lot of these aren't really relevant in this case. However, you can feel free to check those out if you want. What we need to do from this point is come up to the top here we're going to be hovering over our url and we're simply going to be left clicking it and then our url will be copied from this point we're going to be opening up obs and we're going to be putting this url in there once obs is open we're going to be coming down to the bottom left here to our scenes and sources we're going to be selecting any scene here you would like to add this controller overlay to or you can feel free to create a new scene if you would like we're then going to be coming to our sources tab right here and we're going to be adding a new browser source to do this we're going to be coming down to the bottom left of sources click on the plus option right here and we're going to be clicking on the browser option right here once we select this open we'll get this extra pop-up and here we can feel free to give it a name if you would like. In this case, I'm going to be naming it NES controller. Once you're happy with that, simply click OK. And then we are brought to this extra pop up. Now, from this point, you may see this OBS screen right here. In this case, you don't have to worry about it. What we need to do is come down here to the URL tab and we're going to need to click in here. We're going to be deleting the old URL and we're going to be pasting the new URL that we just
just got from the gamepad viewer website. Simply click control and V to paste it in here. Then our controller overlay will be added. Now from this point, there is two extra things you can do. One is you can change the width and the height. For today's video, I'm just going to be leaving it default, but you can feel free to come back in here at any time and change this. You can also feel free to set up a custom frame rate for this controller if you'd like. Again, for today's video, I'm going to be leaving it default. And then you have a couple of extra settings here, but I'd recommend leaving all these by default, unless you're really familiar with what you're doing here. From this point, I'm simply going to be clicking OK on the bottom right of this window. And then you should see a disconnected controller here. Again, all you need to do is click any button on your controller, and then it should be connected again right away. And you can see my controller overlay is here active and everything seems to work again. Now from this point, you can click and drag and move this anywhere you want. And if you'd like to scale this here a little bit as well, you can simply click on it, come to the red box here and you can click and drag from the corner, or you can feel free to resize it by opening up that pop-up window again. To do that, we're going to be coming down to our sources. We're going to be clicking on the NES controller right here. We're going to be double clicking and here you have all of your settings again that you can feel free to come in and change at any point. Now from this point, all you need to do is add an extra display or an extra source behind your controller. For the moment, I currently have my display capture right here. Once I turn this on, it will create this looping effect. But you can see my controller is actually on top of this and you can feel free to set this up and experiment and customize it however you would like. Anyway guys, it's as easy as that to set up an NES Active Controller overlay in OBS. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.